Hello and welcome to the second part of my video about Next War System Advanced Rules shown on the example of Next War Vietnam. In the part 1 of this video I talk a lot about the preparations of the game, pre-scenario, steps and the first phases. We went through the weather phase, initiative phase, electronic warfare, electronic detection phase and first op uh, special operation uh, forces phase. And uh, today uh, we are starting with air naval phase, which is one of the biggest uh, and one of the most different phase, uh, phases from the, st from the standard uh, game series rules. So, uh, we are starting with air superiority sortie step. It says, count the number of air bases airfields with strike markers remaining on them and uh, that are not under repair. The owning player must move half of that number, rounded down minimum of one, of air units into the flown box from the air units based in the appropriate theater. Uh, luckily, uh, we can ignore this part because we don't have any airfields or air bases with strike markers. In that in that case, we are safe. We have only one hit quarter with two strike. Uh, ma uh, with a uh, strike marker with the value of 2, but nothing else. So, this is not working for us. Step B. Count the number of air bases airfields, not under repair, that are either captured or destroyed in the previous turn and this turn's first special operation forces phase, if, if applicable. The opposing player moves half that number, rounded down minimum of 1, of AO units into the flown box from the air units based in the appropriate theater. And now, we have some airfields and air bases destroyed actually. We have one, two, three. So, uh, three halved is one and a half, and uh, we have to um, round it down. So, we, we round it down to one, and because of that, we have to remove move one of our air unit of allied forces into the flown box. So let's go here for a while, and now I will take. Hmm, let's say I will take uh, this. No, no, this is very. This is uh, too good. Okay, let it be my last Su-22, and it moves down to the flown box. Okay. So it is out of game uh, for this turn at last, and that's all for step B. Now step C. R reset each side air bases destroyed captured this turn marker down to zero. Okay, this marker was on the. I speak about this marker. It was on the uh, in the box three in the max matrix table, and now it returns to zero, so if, uh, every um, air airfield or air airbase we'll destroy in, the, in this turn will be counted again. Now, both, play, both players place air units in the air superiority box. And now we are moving into the air, air stuff. Air stuff is, well, quite complicated, so I will do my best to tell you how this stuff works. And to make it easier, I will take some of air counters now to show you what 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 do we have on them and how they work. Maybe this one, maybe this one, and maybe this one. All right, let's zoom camera a bit. And now, what do we have on our counters? First, we have a silhouette of our uh, plane and its name. Next, in the upper uh, uh, left corner we, ha we can have one uh, or two letters, or no, no letters at all. This might happen like here, for example, maybe. If there is uh, A, like here or there or there, this means that such plane has all weather capability. It can operate whenever the weather is good or bad. If there is no such letter, like here, this means that uh, such plane hasn't all weather capability and when the weather goes worse, it cannot operate. 
Next, if there is S here, like with this F22, it means that the, uh, this plane is stealth. This gives us uh, some uh, good uh, things when it comes to the uh, air combat, because uh, such plane is harder to locate and it can attack even before it will be located by the enemy. So it's very good to have some stealth. And uh, now we have some uh, uh, values down here. First one is air to air. It tells us how good uh, this plane is against enemy planes. Some planes have it in parentheses. If so, this means that such plane cannot attack. It can only defend uh, itself against the enemy, but if it's, uh, it, can, it is not, uh, it hasn't any fighter capabilities, so it cannot attack it. I guess it makes sense. This is, for example, a bomber, so you won't probably use it to attack enemy planes. Uh, and, uh, there might be one or two stars uh, next to the air to air capability, or there may be no stars at all, like here. If uh, there are two stars, this means that uh, such plane has long range capability. This means it can attack on the long range, on the standoff range, and on the dogfight range. If there is one star, this means that such plane can attack on the in the standoff uh, range and in the dogfight range. If there are no stars at all, like here, here or here, this means such plane can, can fight in the dogfight range only. And next we have a combat support value. A combat support value is an <coughs> efficiency uh, used when uh, our plane is sent to support any ground combat. <coughs> we can use this number as the modifier for our uh, combat roles. Uh, finally, <coughs> we have strike value. This means that such uh, value is used when our plane uh, tries to, uh, to bomb some target, to destroy some installation and so. <coughs> If there is a star here, just like here, this means that such a plane has standoff uh, strike ability. This means that it can attack enemy installations without being afraid of being hit off uh, from enemy anti-air defense uh, systems. But it also, <coughs> using uh, such, an ab such ability, reduces its strike value by half, rounded down. So, uh, it's some, sometimes it is worth, especially when enemy air defense systems are very strong, to use it. And, or, if our plane is so uh, valuable. But it reduces our strike value dr drastically, so sometimes it is not worth to use it. Next we have pilot skill. This means, uh, this, uh, this um, uh, tells us how good our pilot is. And sometimes it is uh, used uh, when, when we uh, resolve uh, a certain uh, steps of air combat and so. Finally, on the upper right corner, we have a range that our plane can operate on. It can be short. This means that plane can operate on the, in the one zone only. For example, to show you. If we have a short, uh, sh short range and our plane is here, it can operate only in this zone. It cannot fly anywhere around. There is one exception about from this. <laughs> if you play next to uh, Taiwan, then your Chinese units that are, uh, that, are oper that are based in China can operate around Taiwan, e even if they are short. But any, in any other situation, they can operate only within one C zone. Next, we have medium. Uh, this means that such plane has uh, 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 two zones range. This means it can operate in the one zone and fly onto the adjacent zones, but no further. Uh, units with long range can operate in the three zones range. So, for example, it can operate here, here, and there. And finally, unlimited range. This great plane can operate anywhere you want. On 
uh, on the entire strategic display. So this is quite good. Uh, finally, we have uh, some fancy stuff on uh, the certain kind of planes. For example, you can see that this plane has its uh, combat support value of half. This means that it cannot uh, support any combat b all by himself, because it would be only half, so no modifier. But if we use two of them together for the, for the same mission, they can provide a combat support value of one. Also, some planes have WW uh, <clears throat> uh, instead of all these factors here. This means that this is white vessel unit. White vessel units are especially trained to uh, attack and destroy enemy anti-air defense trucks. They cannot do much save the attacking enemy air defense trucks, but they are very effective against this. So, that's all when it comes to the air counters. I hope I was able to tell you what do, what do we have here. And now, we have to do the stuff or that they told us to do. So, we have to choose our air units that we will use to fight for uh, air superiority. And where, what, are, what are we doing with this? We need to go here, into the air superiority missions par, part of the strategic display. Okay, this should be good. I might zoom my camera a bit later, but for now. Uh, here is a superiority mission box, and here where we have to place our uh, units that will be fighting for air superiority. Only units that have air-to-air -air capability can be used here. We cannot use our units uh, that have no such uh, capability, like for example this one, or from the China, this one. But all the others are fine. Of course, we, we don't have to send all our units here, because if we, uh, any unit that will be sent here will have to fight against enemy planes and it can be only used later in this turn to provide escort for our missions. It cannot be sent on, on any kind of missions. So for example if we will send our unit with high, higher uh, ground combat or uh, strike uh, value then we won't be able to use it uh, to provide any combat support or, pro or to make any strike missions. It, it will be used for the air superiority stuff only. So we have to choose which, which ones of our units will be sent here to decide uh, to, uh, to provide air superiority. And now the question is who's going to be first? The game tells us that a player, uh, players do it simultaneously. They both choose their fighters and they place them simultaneously here. But if you do it solo, this might be a problem. If so, uh, my idea is that you check who has air uh, AVAX advantage. And it is uh, uh, China for now. Chin Chinese air advantage is on level of 2. So let's, uh, uh, let's uh, tell, let's make it that allied player has to send their fighters here first. So I will send most of my fighters. I have some very good fighters here. Okay, and I will keep these, un these four in my uh, ready box. Why? Because I might like to use them later to provide some combat support, to provide some, to make some strike missions and so. So I'm not sending all of my fighters. And now China, Chinese player. China has dozens of uh, interceptors, so uh, you can see that they, they have only uh, air to air value, they don't have any strike value or uh, com uh, cl uh, combat support, they are uh, made only to gain air superiority. And that's good for Chinese player, of course. So, 
Chinese player is sending all of his units here. There is a lot of them, you can see. And I think this will be totally fine. I will keep my uh, remaining units in the uh, ready box because I will need them to gain some uh, support for my attack. Okay, so let them be here and I hope they will, they, these guys will be enough to gain some nice uh, AO superiority for Chinese player. And now we have to choose uh, who is going to fight who, because this is pretty important, of course. And how it goes. A player who has AVAX advantage against, again, a Chinese player has AVAX advantage of 2, chooses the number of engagements uh, equal to, the, to his AVAX advantage. So Chinese player has AVAX advantage of 2, so he can choose two, uh, first two duels. And what he is going to do? Uh, he has uh, only two units with uh, long-range capability, these J-20 fighters. So, uh, what, uh, what Chinese player wants to do is to engage both of these dangerous F-22, because they are best uh, American planes ever in this game, of course. Uh, even F-33 isn't as good as, the, as F-22. I was quite surprised by that, in fact. So I'm choosing to, this one will fight this one and this one will fight this one. And now a uh, Chinese player uh, uh, decided for these two. Now allied player may choose one. And what he is going to do is this Su-22 will fight this J-10. Why? Because J-10 is the worst of uh, Chinese planes used here, so he will have a uh, higher chance to do anything against them. Hima. Now, Chinese player has to choose next two engagements. So he is cho choosing this J-11, and it will be against this F-15C. Again, he is cho choosing another J-11, and against this F-15. Allied player again. He's choosing this Su-30 against this J-10. And finally, a Chinese player, he is choosing this J-11 against this Su-30. And uh, is that all? No, because Chinese player has still some of his planes unused. So he can now add one plane to each engagement. No more. You can use only two planes, or two counters, of course, because one, uh, one counter doesn't mean one plane in the real life. So uh, you can use, uh, you can use a maximum of two uh, counters in one engagement, on one side. So uh, what I'm going to do is to add one here, one here, one here because this one is particularly pa particularly dangerous plane because of its high uh, combat uh, support and strike values so i would like love to eliminate it and now here and maybe there this will be risky because this uh, f22 is very dangerous plane so sending any uh, uh, weak uh, planes against it might result with uh, with them being destroyed, but if uh, if our F, uh, American F-22 will attack them, he won't be able to attack this spectacular J-20. So, that's uh, so, uh, sometimes it is good to use your uh, weakest plane as cannon fodder. Okay, so now let's zoom camera a bit, so you will be able to see how air combat works. And uh, now I think I will do one minor change. Uh, what I'm going to do, I'm going to uh, uh, remove this Su Sukhoi Su-30 and instead I will place this F-35. Why? You will see. Uh, I'm, going to, I'm going to show you more stuff because of that. 
that I wouldn't be able to show you without this F35 uh, being here. Okay, so air combat goes in the three steps. Long range combat, standoff combat and the dogfight combat. We have to resolve uh, first all long range combats, then all standoff combats and finally all dogfight combats. First, long range combat. Only units with two stars uh, next to the air to air value might attack in the long range combat. Uh, this, uh, this is engagement on 3100 miles. It goes simultaneously and all units with these two stars are able to fire in this step. But there is one uh, important thing to remember. Units that are, met, are, are stealth with this S value cannot be attacked in the long range and standoff steps. So uh, we have both uh, stealth units here so they cannot attack each other on the long range and standoff. So they are just hiding <laughs> against each other and so they cannot be attacked. But here is the same but Chinese player placed this J10 here and it is, this is not stealth unit at all. Because of that this American F-22 might attack it with its long range capability. So it has strike value of 6 against a Chinese strike value of 4. 6 minus 4 is 2. So we go into adv uh, advanced air combat table which is here and uh, we have to we, we, will, we will use a column of plus 2 because we have 6 minus 4 it is plus 2. Finally, we have some modifiers. There are different modifiers for long range step, standoff step and dogfight step. We are in the long range. So, plus two, strike or combat support aircraft firing. No, we are using a fighter for a combat uh, air superiority mission. And plus three, if it, if it is a storm weather. No, it is not a storm. So, we don't have any modifiers. So uh, all we have to do is to roll 1, d10, and check the result. It is 3. 3 in the plus 2 is dam DA. This means damaged and aborted. So Chinese plane is damaged, so we have to flip its counter on the damaged side. You can uh, tell that plane is damaged thanks to this light strip, stripe on the uh, counter and now it is placed in the abort box. Good. And do we have any other stuff to do? Yes, here. Again, you can, you can see that this uh, British F-35 is stealth and it has long range capability. So he can attack one of these Chinese planes. And now he is going to attack this J-11 because it is more dangerous it, it has say, a to a value of 5, so I have 4 minus 5, it's minus 1. It will be harder to hit him, because I will use this column. 4, it is AD or D. And uh, this is a result that we have to read uh, according to the table uh, differently for uh, dif different steps. AD applies instead of D result during long range and standoff attacks. The result gives the firing unit advantage first shot in the ensuing standoff or dogfight combat. Rotate the defender 180 degrees. Tail to the enemy aircraft. So we have to place this unit just like that. And now, when, when we are fighting against him, we will have an advantage. This is good. But, well, it could be better. We could uh, damage him, abort him, destroy him. But even so, it is not bad. Okay, that's all for a uh, long-range uh, step. Next, we have to resolve all resolve our attacks on the standoff combat steps. This is uh, 
This represents units firing radar-guided missiles at a range of 10-30 miles. Only units that have uh, two or one stars might participate in this step. So, most of our units have one or two stars, so that's good, but again, these units are stealth, so they cannot be attack attacked in this step again. So let's go here. And now here we have a situation when we have two Chinese uh, fighters against one, uh, uh, one uh, Vietnamese fighter. Does it mean that they are going to attack alone and uh, add their air to air value? No. They are going to launch separate attacks on this Vietnamese fighter. And now, what is the order of such fights? Uh, all these fights are uh, done simultaneously, so we have to uh, make our attacks, make enemy attacks, and then check the results. So let's carry on. First, let's uh, check Chinese attacks. First, uh, we have 5 against 4. It is, minus, it is plus 1. And now let's check if we have any uh, standoff uh, diurnal modifiers here. Minus 1 if attacks against 0 air to air strength. We don't have any, prob any uh, units like that. Plus 1 non NATO, Japan, Russia, Chinese fighter. No, this is Chinese fighter. Strike or combat support, firing aircraft, no, and storm, no. So we don't have any modifiers here. They are attacking uh, with uh, plus one first and then zero, because four against four, against four is zero. So let's roll for plus one first. It is five. Five is pl in plus one is ADD. Uh, AD uh, means advantage. So we have to remember that this plane uh, will, <coughs> these Chinese fighters will get advantage in the further dogfight step. Now we have to roll for this, so it is 4 against 4, it is 0. 3 in 0 means abort. So this, after this step, this Vietnamese uh, fighter will be aborted. But before it will be even aborted, it might fire back. It decides, it decides to fire on this Chinese fighter, because it has 4 against 4, it is 0. And now we have to remember that this is non-NATO, Japan, Russia, People Republic of China plane, so it will gain, get negative plus 1 modifier for its die roll. So it fires with firepower of 0 and plus 1. Oh, pretty good! 1 plus 1 is 2. 2 in the <coughs> 0 is abort. This means that this Vietnamese fighter was aborted, but it managed <coughs> to abort this Chinese fighter as well. That was pretty good. <coughs> okay, we have to resolve next combat. It goes here. Uh, first, I'm going to attack uh, with Chinese planes. So, 4 minus 5, it's minus 1, it is a miss, 5 against 5, it's 0, 4 and 0, it is ADD. So, I have to flip American fighter, and now American fighter decides to attack this chi chi uh, Chinese fighter, so American fighter gets plus 1. Oh, one. This is pretty good. One. This means damaged and aborted. So Chinese fighter is damaged and placed in the aborted box. Next combat goes here. We have five against five, so it is zero on both sides. First for China. This is a miss. And for USA. Wow. They have good luck. One. This is damaged and aborted again. <laughs> so, you go down. Finally, next here. Uh, just like before, this is a stealth unit. Stealth units cannot be attacked in the, uh, uh, in the standoff uh, step, but they can attack. So, I'm going to attack this Chinese fighter. I have 4 against 4, 
so it is zero. Impressive. I am impressive of these allied player rolls. Zero in zero, it says again damage and aborted. So they are damaged and aborted. And finally here, we have two Chinese planes against one Vietnamese plane. So first, the, these two are attacking, they both have five against four, so they have plus one. We have first plus one roll, three, three in the plus one abort, and I have to roll for another one, four, this also says abort, so this plane is aborted, but it can fire back first. It has minus one, because four, four against five, and now it has plus one because it is a Vietnamese fighter. Six plus one is seven, in minus one it is a miss, so this plane is aborted. And that's all for standoff step. Finally, we have a last step called dogfight. It represent, represents air units firing heat-seeking missiles and guns at ranges from point blank to 10 miles. And now this goes differently because we are, fi we are not firing simultaneously. Uh, we are using uh, units with higher air attack uh, value first and then uh, the lower, the lower, the, the lower. So, First, we have to check all units with 6, then we have to fire with all our units with 5, then with 4, and etc, etc. So, we are starting here, these both guys have 6, so they are firing first. So they have 6 against 5, so it is plus 1, and now, for the dogfight, we have different modifiers. First, we are finally able to use pilot skill. Next we have attack against bombers, we don't care about it. Now, if there is overcast weather, no. Strike or uh, combat support aircraft firing, no. And storm, no. So we have to remember about pilot skill. So let's start here, we have 6 against 5, so we have plus 1. And American fighter has a pilot skill of minus 2. Impressive. So let's make a roll with plus 1 and minus 2 DRM. Oh, 6 minus uh, uh, four, 2 is 4. So we have 4 in minus 1, uh, is in plus 1. This means abort. And now, because this step is not simultaneous, then this means that this Chinese plane is inst instantly aborted. It cannot fire back. It, it could, it would be able to do so if he would have also, air to air value of 6, but it had 5, so no. Same situation here. 6 against four, 5, it's plus 1 and minus 2 for pilot skill. Wow! 0, minus 2. So, X. Yes, this means what you think. X means that enemy plane goes down in flames completely and it is eliminated. Fantastic! Why fantastic? Because it provides us some nice victory points as well. Great, isn't it? Okay, we don't have any fight here and we have one fight here. You can notice that this American plane was flipped, was moved backwards, so this says that Chinese unit has advantage. What it means? Normally, in the dogfight step, they would fight on each other simultaneously because they both have a AO to AO value of 5, yes. But because this Chinese, player has, uh, Chinese plane has advantage, it fires first, resolve uh, the combat, and then uh, American plane might fire back, if he's still able to do so. So let's fire for Chinese fighter, it has 5 against 5, so it is 0, and minus 1 because of player uh, of pilot skill. Oh, let's... Wow! This is called revenge. Uh, zero minus one is minus one in zero. Yes, it is X. So now these American planes are completely eradicated. Great. Okay, 
And finally, we have one more combat here. Again, this is, uh, you can see, uh, advantage, but this, uh, this Chinese fighter has higher pilot, uh, has higher air to air value. So it's able to fire first. It has 5 against 4, so it has plus 1, but it has plus 1 pilot skill. So this pilot sucks. Okay. Oh. And roll sucks as well. Okay. That's all for all 5 uh, air to air planes. And now we have one with four. So his, this British F-35 strikes back. It has four minus five, so it is minus one. But pilot skill is impressive, minus two. So let's see if he will be able to do anything bad to this Chinese fighter. Oh yes, he can. Zero minus two is uh, minus two in the plus one. It is X. Down you go! We have yet another Chinese fighter going down in flames. And that's what we call good dogfight. Alright, and now we have to count a total number of planes on each side. You can see that we have <laughs> interesting situation because we have uh, equal number of planes on each side. This thing rarely happens in the first turn of this uh, game because normally uh, Allied player hasn't all these mighty American and British planes here. I used them only, uh, uh, only to show you how the multiple ways of uh, resolving air to air uh, combat. Normally it would be a massacre of uh, some poor lone Vietnamese fighters. That's how normally uh, this uh, turn goes because uh, you can use uh, Vietnamese units only. Also, this is a wise sometimes to not engage any of your units into air superiority missions. You may ask why. Because if enemy has huge advantage and you can only send a few number, few air units here, then they will be completely eradicated in no time because of enemy advantage. You will lo lo lose a lot of them, enemy gain a lot of victory points and Sometimes it is better to give enemy a, a, a chance to gain a full air superiority and save some of your units for later, when you, you will accumulate more air units and you will be able to fight for your air superiority uh, normally. But when you have uh, some good planes, like we had here, you can, al you can always try to fight. You can see. A Chinese player had, had a huge advantage of planes at the beginning of this step and now we have the same number of airplanes on both sides. So, this is good. And now, after all our air superiority fights are resolved, we have to do two more steps. Let's zoom out. First, we have to do uh, AVAX advantage changes. If any side gains uh, AO advantage, we have to move AVAX uh, counter on any side. But since we have uh, four units on each side, then it means that none of, no, uh, no side gain any advantage. And to mark it, we have to go into the A current air superiority uh, uh, track and mark it as contested because th there is no difference of, of planes one side has four the other side also has four so we have uh, it contested and that's all when it comes to the air stuff you can see it can be quite tricky but I hope I was able to tell you uh, how it works quite uh, clear and now you have an idea how the stuff works. It is not, it, it can be uh, quite complicated at the, when you uh, play this game first and I have to say that I had a little problems with understanding how it works when I get uh, ne for my first next war game but now I think it, it is quite cool. The only problem with these uh, uh, advanced AO rules is 
that they make a game uh, significantly longer. Uh, there is a uh, an option for you, if you want, to play a game with all a uh, uh, with all uh, advanced rules, and you can uh, you can still use standard a rules with a points in, po points instead of a counters. This uh, can be useful if you want to make your game shorter and quicker. As you may remember, this phase is called a naval phase. And we are done with air stuff, but we still have to deal with naval stuff. So, uh, strategic display is uh, divided into uh, some zones. First we have sea zones, like this one divided with white lines. We have inshore boxes, this one, and we have land, land zones. So, or rather I should say island zone, because this is this these zones represent certain important islands also we have some holding boxes like for example here we have indian ocean holding box and uh, some of them are controlled at the beginning of the game some are contested uh, when we play uh, only next war uh, vietnam uh, what we really care is these three uh, zones, Sparty Islands, South China Sea and the Gulf of Tonkin. If we play combined game with uh, Next War uh, Taiwan, Next War Korea or uh, all, of, uh, all of them together, if you have table big enough, uh, then you have to make a rolls for all of your sea zones because th there will be a lot of movement on the entire board. But in the Next War uh, Vietnam what we really care about are these three zones. So we have to check if they are controlled or not. And the rule says in the standard game or if the US intervenes on the level of 2 in the advanced game unless automatically contested always roll for sea control in the Sparty Island, South China Sea and the Gulf of Tonkin uh, at sea box. So we will have to roll for them, even if they are, they are starting the game as uh, Chinese controlled. But first thing first. First we have to roll for all uh, inshore boxes and then for sea zones. We are starting with Gulf of Tonkin inshore box, because if uh, one side controls both uh, sea zone and inshore box, we don't have to roll. They control everything. But if inshore box is controlled by the opposing player or contested, we have to roll for this. So we are starting to roll for the Gulf of Tonkin inshore box and uh, we have to check for modifiers. Let's check for C control and first. Gulf of Tonkin, it is automatically minus two for China because this is a close area to China and Chinese player gains this fancy minus two modifier. Next. Minus one per non-allied surface action group carrier vessel present. No, we don't have any non-allied units in this intro box. Plus one for allied naval unit present. Yes, we have one allied surface action group here, so we have minus two and now we have plus one, so we have still minus one. Uh, minus x for sub threat level. Sub threat level is uh, minus three and plus one for anti-submarine warfare level. It is also three, so it nullifies itself. Only for East China Sea, Taiwan Strait, South China Sea, Spartley's Gulf of Tonkin, allied only in the Sea of Japan. Minus one, plus one, non-allied, allied, air superiority, plus two, minus two, non-allied, allied, air supremacy. We can ignore because we have a, a superiority on the contested level. And finally, PRC expands cruise missile points. So now uh, a Chinese player may spend uh, his uh, uh, his uh, missile points to get some fancy modifiers here. And now he's going to do so. He spends uh, one uh, cruise missile point to get minus two modifier in the Gulf of Tonkin. So his uh, cruise missile goes from 13 to 12 and now we have to make a roll. 
we have minus 2 for Gulf of Tonkin, minus 2 for uh, cruise missile, so it's minus 4, and plus 1 because of the Allied naval unit present here. So we have totally of minus, uh, uh, we have minus 3. So let's make a roll, and 1. 1 minus, tr uh, minus 3 is minus 2, so if it's uh, 2 or less, it is Chinese controlled. So we have to take control marker and place it in the Gulf of Tonkin inshore box. And now, because it is enemy control, we have to take this surface action group and withdraw it into the Vietnam port. So I will be placing this in the Haiphong port. And now I have to roll for parcels in the box. So what we have here? Uh, no, uh, uh, no, uh, 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 no naval units on neither side. No AO superiority super basic. Chinese player might get. Nothing. So just a clear die roll. Five. Five, it is three to four, five. This is contested. No one controls Paracels Island. Next, we have to roll for Spartlis. Same situation. One. Wow, that's pretty good. This means that Chinese player controls this inshore box. And now we have to roll for sea zones. First, for Gulf of Tonkin, we have minus two because of uh, this initial uh, modifier. Next, we have Chinese surface action group here. So we have minus three. And I could uh, get uh, another uh, minus two with uh, cruise missile. And I think I will spend it anyway, because this is very important for me to control the Gulf of Tonkin. So I will have minus five. Four minus five is minus one, so Gulf of Tonkin remains in Chinese control. Next, South China Sea. Uh, I have uh, a carrier group here, so I have minus one, and I don't get, I don't use any other modifiers. I could spend cruise missiles here as well, but I'm not going to do so. So I have minus one. Oh, seven minus one is six. So it is Allied control. Oh my! And because of that, this Chinese group has to retreat into the zone they control. So let it go to China. And finally, Spartly Islands. Again, I don't have any, inter any interest in this area for now, so I'm not going to spend any cruise missiles here. So I just have to make a roll. 6 minus uh, uh, 0, it is Allied control, so it is pretty good. Alright, so that's all when it comes to the sea uh, control stuff, right? Uh, no. Oh, oh, no and yes. <laughs> Why? Uh, next step is both sides roll for detection for all naval units not in the port but not in the game turn one. So we can skip this step and next during non-storm non -storm, storm turns both sides roll for mine clearance not in the game turn one. We don't have any mines in this game so far and <coughs> we, we are skipping this uh, step because it is it says it is not in the game turn one. Okay. So next we have second special operations forces phase. If a contested turn, both players alternating non-allied first, or else the non-initiative player allocates special operation forces missions, resolve missions, roll for a soft marker survival, and places marker in the used or eliminated boxes appropriately. Oh, sorry. Okay. So. Uh, this is a uh, non not uh, this is initiative turn and this means that now non non initiative player is able to allocate his special forces missions 
And now this is what I'm going to do. Now I have a lot of special forces units because I have four American and four Vietnamese. There is a pretty big number of them and I might allocate them so I will be able, I hope so, to do some bad stuff to China. Okay, I allocated all my special operation forces counters and what I'm going to do. First I'm going to attack these Chinese air defense installations with my American special operation forces missions. So, this SIM is going to be my first target and uh, I have to remember that uh, all attacks against enemy holding box have uh, minus uh, one modifier, plus one modifier because they are occupied by less than one brigade. This is special game rules. So, let's start with this attack. This is SAM. When attack against SAM I have another plus one. So, totally I have plus two modifier for this attack. Wow! Zero. Zero plus two is two. So, it is min minus one. So Chinese SAM go, goes down by one, and now I have to roll for the survival of this American unit. And they have minus three because they are United States unit, and plus one because it was right. So totally minus two. Seven minus two is five, so they are fine. They are moved into used box. Next, here against enemy detection truck. I have plus one because occupied by less than one brigade. Seven plus one is eight. It is a failure. Now survival roll. One plus uh, minus sorry minus three and plus one. So they are fine. They return home. Next, I'm going to make these two holding box air bases attacks. And now they are in the roof woods and they are installation so I will use this column and now this is right so I have uh, plus one and they are installations so they are occupied by one uh, by less than one brigade so I have plus two for each of these attacks first here three plus one is five five it is a miss Second attack, oh sorry, first I have to make a survival roll. One, they are fine. Now, second attack, seven, again a miss, survival roll. Oh my! Nine minus three because of US forces and plus one because of the right, it is uh, seven. And seven or less or more, they are eliminated. So this special forces unit goes to the eliminated box. Okay, that's all when it comes to the strategic display, but I have some more attacks here on the uh, operational map. And now we are back on the operational map and I have some other uh, special operation forces missions here as well. First, I'm going to attack this Chinese headquarter and they are on the same box, the same hex with enemy unit so this will provide some nasty uh, modifier here so let's go on and now we are attacking in the flat terrain we are attacking headquarter so we will be using this column so uh, our chances are well small and we have uh, plus two oh sorry this, uh, this, uh, this gives us in, uh, virtually no chance to strike, to, to perform successful operation, but I still I will have to make a roll. Why? You will see. One. This is very good roll, but I have to add uh, plus two if occupied by uh, but at least one brigade. Yes, this is one brigade here, so I have plus two. So one plus two is three and this, so this is a failure uh, I have to make a roll for uh, survival 4 so they have 
non-US UK minus one and plus one for right, so it is zero. Uh, so they have four, so they survived. That's good. At last. Okay, next they go here. This is another attack against enemy headquarter, but this time we have no enemy units here. So <clears throat> we have a very small chance if we get zero or one. Mm, that was close, but still a miss. Survival roll. Oh, it is a failure. Because we have plus one, minus, we have minus one for non US UK allied, plus one for right, so zero, and eight is higher than seven. So this special forces unit is eliminated. Next, I'm going to attack these uh, combat helicopters. And uh, they are in the jungle. So I'm using this, call, this uh, verse, jungle, hello airfield, six, it is one strike. Pretty good. We get one strike and any one, two or X result against Hello causes a step loss. So these helicopters have one step loss. That's pretty good. Now let's roll for special operation survival. Four. They are fine. They, are, they survived. And I have one more attack here I hope you can see here against enemy airfield 7 well you know it is a miss so let's make survival roll 1 they are fine okay and this concludes all actions in the uh, second special operation forces phase and I think this is a good moment to finish this part of this video, it al it's already pretty long, and in the next uh, part of the video we'll go into first strike phase.